Well, hello friends. Earlier last week, we made a couple of uh, videos from my daughter Haley, uh, in which, uh, if so interested, you could learn how to sign much of the liturgy of our worship services. And we did so so that uh, this would be possible for you as a way of safely responding uh, during those times where the people of the church, we proclaim our faith. And so uh, because it is right now less safe due to COVID-19 to loudly profess uh, and also with you or uh, hear our prayer or even a single word, Amen. And so we thought learning these actions of American Sign Language uh, could provide you a new way to keep participating in an expressive way. And so uh, I commend those to you again. If you haven't seen them yet, uh, you can go back into our archives and find those from last Thursday as a uh, perhaps a, a special and helpful tool for you. Not required, but just another way of creatively engaging through uh, this time of pandemic. However, signing during worship service is nothing new to us Lutherans. In fact, in Luther's small catechism, he encouraged Christians to continue to make the sign of the cross upon ourselves as a sacred reminder of our baptized life into, into, uh, into Christ Jesus as disciples. And that is, of course, most frequently done during worship. I'm going to talk about the occasions in our worship service in a few moments. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, provide some teaching as to how we cross ourselves and then more about why and when a little bit later. There are three variations of uh, finger positioning and how we cross ourselves. And it's usually done with the right hand in reference to the right hand of God or the sheep on the right, the goats on the left, as we hear from the, uh, the teachings of Jesus, but generally with the right hand if possible. And the first variation is the use of two fingers. Either uh, here we have the index and the middle finger together, or the thumb and the index together. And this is to use two fingers as an intentional reminder of the two natures of Christ, fully God and fully human, as we remind ourselves that we are baptized into Christ. So these two fingers or these two fingers. Uh, the second variation is to bring uh, the tips of the thumb, the index, and the middle finger all together and that is to signify the three persons of the Trinity together when we cross ourselves. Or finally, the third variation is to extend the thumb, the index, and the middle finger while folding the ring and little finger in against the palm, indicating both the Holy Trinity, with all three fingers being used, and the two natures of Christ simultaneously. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so with that explained, there are several points in our worship liturgy where the sign of the cross is most often made. And the placement of the cross at these locations, well, it isn't determined randomly because, of course, there's some good intended theological significance in these times. And the first is at the very beginning of worship service. The sign of the cross uh, is made during the invocation where we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And it is into that name which we Christians are baptized, of course. As St. Paul teaches in Romans 6, that it is indeed into the death or the cross of Christ that we have been baptized. If we have received a death like his, we will certainly also then receive a new life and resurrection like his. And so the first time the sign of the cross is placed on the Christian is, of course, when? In our holy baptism, where the baptized has been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed in his love forever. So when pastors invoke the name of the triune God that we have been baptized, we have been sealed with, we remember that with our holy celebration and the gift of the baptism that we have received. And Christians then, of course, second, may also cross themselves during absolution, following our confession of sin, where we hear the pastor declare, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because just as I noted a moment ago about the gifts that we receive in our communion or in our baptism, the forgiveness of sins is certainly one of those gifts. And so we remember that again as we receive the gift of absolution. Now, Third, uh, some pastors choose to make the cross upon themselves prior to proclaiming the gospel of Christ Jesus. 
And then similarly, uh, many pastors will also then choose to cross themselves before beginning their sermon, before preaching the Holy Word of God in their sermons and their homilies. And these times to cross themselves remind the pastor that they are called as the pastor of Christ's church to proclaim the glory of Christ Jesus crucified for the sake of the world and the redeeming glory of God in his mercy and in his love. And so some pastors will choose to do that prior to beginning either the gospel or the sermon. Uh, next, some Christians have opted to make the sign of the cross upon themselves and bow during the words, Blessed is he. And that takes place during the Sanctus portion of the Holy Communion celebration. Uh, that time, just before the words of institution, we sometimes sing the Sanctus, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And those words, Blessed is he, were cheered on by the crowds on Palm Sunday, of course, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on his way to the cross to eventually achieve that gift of grace that we are about to again celebrate and receive together. In Holy Communion. So some will choose to mark themselves during that time. Uh, next, some Christians choose to cross themselves when they are blessed by the pastor. Uh, in our regular services, this most often occurs during the benediction and the dismissal, both of which take place near the end of worship. And then finally, the most profound act of reverence and blessing occurs during, of course, the consecration and the distribution of the Eucharist, the bread and wine or grape juice. This sacred and a very reverent joy honors the bodily presence of Christ now gathered among us as the church, living with us as promised to all of Jesus' disciples and now received and shared as commanded in, with, and under the bread and wine or grape juice during the Holy Sacrament of Communion. Now, Making the sign of the cross upon yourself is certainly not required for discipleship or to be a Christian. However, it can be a very helpful practice in reminding us that in all things, we remain baptized children of God and beloved siblings of Christ Jesus, that we live our daily lives in that grace, always, as there is nothing that can take away that love of God from you. And so, fellow beloved children of God, may you be so blessed today to live deeper into that truth. Amen. Good morning. For the prayers this morning, I'm going to start with Psalm 89. I invite you to pray with me. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known throughout all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and strength. And by your favor, you exalt our horn. Loving and gracious God, you are great and you are mighty. We praise you, O oh Lord, and thank you for your righteousness, for your grace, and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the community of Christ Lutheran that continues to grow and continues to learn faithfully of your word and of your grace and reaches out to share that with others. We thank you for this new language 
of sign language that we can learn and help share with others. We thank you for all the new ways of communication that the staff and the people of CLC, both friends and members, are learning how to worship in new and exciting ways. And we pray that you pour your mercy and your wisdom upon those making the decisions. Lord, we again pray for our students, uh, both children and youth and young adults who have returned to school. We pray for the teachers and the administrators as they make the hard decisions and trying to make the safest decisions for our loved ones. We pray for parents and for all those who are parenting that you give them the strength and the courage and the patience in order to go forward in this school year during pandemic times. We pray always for our doctors, for our nurses, for all the medical personnel who are working with those, uh, with the COVID patients, with all those who are sick, with those who are struggling, both physically and mentally. Lord, right now we pray for those that we have in mind who need your extra care. Lord, we pray for the lonely. We pray for those who are mourning. We pray for those who are bewildered, for those who are scared, for those who are underemployed or unemployed, for those who have loved ones for whom they are concerned. We pray for our world, Lord. There's so many concerns up in the air. We worry about global warming and where these storms and firestorms are coming from. We pray for the election of our next president. And as we're going through the Democratic National Convention this week and the Republican Convention in the days to come, we pray, Lord, that our leaders speak with compassion, with wisdom, with understanding, and with an awe of you. Lord, we pray that you pour your mercy upon all who are in need. For this and for so much more, we lift to you. In Christ's name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you have a blessed day.
Check it out. 